Hi everyone. In the previous video, we have taken a look at two methods to perform hyperparameter optimization, namely grid search and random search. Now, as it turns out, both of these are not very efficient in terms of computation time. Now, success of Halvin is an extension to random search that makes it more efficient. And hyperband is an extension to success of halving to deal with some of the issues that the latter has. In this video, we're going to take a look at both of these methods. Now let's start by uh, observing the problem of, of grid and random search. Now that is that, recall that we just evaluate all possible combinations of hyperparameter or samples of, of hyperparameter configurations in case of random search. And what we basically do is we iteratively train them uh, fully. So for example, in case of neural networks, uh, we just have some pre-specified number of epochs, for example, and we train every configuration for that number of epochs. Now, however, uh, note that some configurations are better early on as well as later on than other configurations. So for example, suppose that on the x-axis here we have the training time of the configurations, and on the y-axis we have the validation accuracy. Now we see that this configuration is improving in performance quite, quite fast and also steadily, whereas this configuration is not really uh, doing so well. So ideally what we would want to, to do is to be able to detect that this configuration is, is not going to be as good as the other one, or at least we have the evidence to suspect that this is the case, which means that we could discard this one early on. So instead of training it in full, what we can do is once we detect that it, it's not going to be good at all, we can just discard this, this training process and thereby save compute time. So this is the intuition of success evolving and its extension hyperband. So success evolving can be visualized as follows. So suppose that on the x-axis we have our compute budget, which you can think of as the total number of, of epochs, for example, and that on the y-axis we have the loss. Now suppose that in round zero we start with uh, randomly sampled configurations, and what we then do is after making a number of training steps, we evaluate all of these configurations. And as its name suggests, what we do is we simply throw away the worst half of configurations and we stop training them and we continue training the best half. That's what we do here. We throw away the worst half, we continue training the best half and now this time around we increase the budget by a factor of two for each of these individual configurations. Now this process simply repeats, so we evaluate their performance at this point and we throw away the worst half and continue training the best half. Again, we double the budget as in this round. And this process repeats and repeats until we end up, uh, in this case, with one fully trained configuration that turns out to be the best configuration. All right, so this is the idea of successful halving. And this is a form of a bandit-based method. And how you can think about this is suppose that you are at a casino and you have different slot machines. So one armed slot machine, you can pull the lever and either you obtain a reward or you, you lose your money, so to say. Now, you can think of each of these slot machines as being a configuration, a hyperparameter configuration. And pulling one lever means that you allocate some budget, some training budget to that configuration. And what you get is you get the reward. So this is its performance, which is either good or it's either bad. And what we then want to find is the best slot machine, which is the best configuration. Now, how does success of often really work in detail? Well, we start off with a set of n random initial configurations. So we have n algorithm configurations and we start with an initial, initial budget B. What we then do is we perform uh, multiple different rounds and in every round, the size of our candidate pool is divided by 
gamma, which is our halving rate. So in the figure that I've showed you before, our halving rate was 2 because in every round we threw away the worst off of configurations. Now, um, think about this for a moment. So suppose that we start with n random configurations and a budget b. Then how many rounds can we perform? And maybe it's, it's good if you pause the video for a few, few minutes and maybe think about this. For the mathematicians, this may be an easy question, uh, but please think about this for a moment. All right, welcome back. So as you may have figured out, if we start with n random configurations and we want to compute the number of times that we can throw away uh, gamma from the, the candidate pools, you may have figured out that we can actually only perform log gamma of n rounds. So what this basically means is that we can discard or divide n by gamma this number of times. Now, uh, one last little important part of information about successive halving is that the budget that we initially start with is divided uniformly over the different rounds. But because we throw away configurations in every round, what this basically means is that every configuration is assigned more budget per round. So consequently, we assign exponentially more budget to good configurations. Now let's try to take a look at a concrete example. So suppose that we start with n is 64 initial configurations and that our total budget is equal to 384. Now also suppose that our halving rate gamma is equal to 2. And now what we want to do is we want to fill out this table. So k represents the round that we're in. Sk bars, that means the number of configurations in round k and RK is the budget assigned to individual configurations in round K. Now I can give away the first value of SK, so this is the number of configurations that we start with in round zero, and that's of course equal to our number of initial configurations. Now I'd like you to, to pause the video for a few moments, or a few minutes, and to think about filling in the rest of this table. Please try out to fill the rest of this table, and then I will see you in a few minutes. Alright, so welcome back. Hopefully this was not too difficult. And the way in which we can fill out this table is, first of all, let's focus on this column. So this is the number of configurations per round. Now we know that we start with 64 configurations by the problem definition. And we also know that our halving rate is 2. So what this means is that every round we throw away the worst half. So this means that in round 1, this value right here will be 32, this one will be 16, etc. etc. So this column is relatively easy to fill out. Now this column is a little bit more complicated, and the way in which you can do this is you can simply uh, compute the budget per round. So in this case, we know that there are six rounds in total. So one through five plus this one, because we start with round zero. So there are six rounds. And since the budget is allocated uniformly across these different rounds, we know that the budget per round is equal to our total budget divided by the number of rounds. So if you divide 384 by six, by six rounds, what we get is a budget of 64 per round. So we know that the budget per round is 64. So what, what this means is that the budget per configuration will be 64 divided by the number of configurations. So in this case, this would be one because there are six, there, we have a budget of 64 and we have 64 configurations. Now, because this was 32, this will be 2 because we have 64 divided by 32, which gives us a budget of 2 per configuration, and so on and so forth. So please make sure that you understand 
the way in which this table is filled out. And then we can proceed to the next slide. Now, successive halving has some important hyperparameters, namely the budget as well as the halving rate. Now, what happens if we assign a higher budget or start with a higher budget? Well, that means that we have also a higher budget per configuration, which will lead to more informed decisions. On the other hand, this also leads to an increased usage of compute time. So we need more compute time to actually do this. Now, the halving rate is also important. And as we increase the halving rate, we start to, to discard configurations more and more aggressively. So we throw away more configurations also early on. And the downside of this could be that we disregard the best candidate early on. So you can imagine that there is a configuration which starts learning quite slow and only after a certain number of epoch it starts to really uh, maximize the, the performance. And maybe this is the best configuration, but because it started off so slow, we, we may throw it away too early. So in, in summary, successive halving allows us to work with a fixed budget, just as random search. Uh, it, it shows good empirical results. It also has strong theoretical foundations. If you're interested, I would highly recommend reading the original paper. And also this is parallelizable because every configuration per round can be run in parallel. Now on the downside, uh, the learning curves can cross as we mentioned before. So a configuration that performs quite poorly early on can perform really well later on. And with successive halving, we, we have the risk of discarding this configuration too early. Now also there is this trade-off between the initial number of configurations that we start with, so n, and the budget that we have. Now to to emphasize this a bit more, this trade-off can be summarized as follows. So if we choose a large number of initial configurations, what this means is that we will only have a small amount of time per configuration. Whereas if we choose a smaller n, we get a larger amount of time per configuration, but we are limited in the number of configurations. And initially we do not know which values of n will work best. So this problem is solved by hyperband. So hyperband simply tries to solve this issue by running successive halving different times with different values of n. So first it does a bracket of successive halving using a large number of initial configurations. After it has done this, it simply randomly samples another set of initial configurations this time a lower amount than in our previous run, and we again do a successive halving bracket. Now again we decrease our initial candidate pool size, and we again do a successive halving bracket, and so on and so forth, until we are in our final bracket, which is equivalent to a random search, because we no longer discard any of the configurations. So this is the basic idea of hyperband. So we start off with a large n, a large number of initial configurations, which means that we do quite some exploration, but we don't have so much time per configuration. And over time, we decrease the n, which means that we will get more time per configuration, but a smaller number of configurations, and this also less exploration. All right, so hyperband also has two important hyperparameters namely capital R, which is equivalent to the maximum resource or maximum budget that can be allocated to a single technique. And again, we also have a gamma hyperparameter, which controls the proportion of configurations that we discard in every round. Now let's see this again in, in table form. So here I is the index of the round that we're in. And what we will do now is we perform different brackets of successive halving with a maximum budget of 81 per configuration and a halving factor or rate of 3. 
So what we do is we simply do our first bracket of successive halving, and we do this with uh, n is equal to 81 initial configurations. Now note that this table is simply equivalent to successive halving. And after we're done with this, we do another bracket of successive halving. And note that the number of configurations or initial configurations of this bracket is equal to the number of configurations in the previous round divided by our halving rate. All right, so this process continues and continues until we have our final bracket where we no longer discard any configurations. So we only have one single round, which means that this is equivalent to random search. Now there are a few important things to notice in this figure or table, and that's that after this bracket, we no longer divide the initial candidate pool size by our halving rate, which was three, because if we would divide this by three, we would get three here. But because there would be, we would violate our hyperparameter R, so the maximum budget per configuration, we cannot do this. So this is important to realize. So if we cannot divide by the halving rate and at the same time not violate R, then we have to do something else. So if you're interested in the mathematical details of how hyperband exactly uh, chooses these values in case of a violation, I would highly suggest reading the original paper. Now, and as mentioned before, here in the last bracket, we only have one round of uh, successive halving without any discarding, which means that this is simply a random search. All right. Now, hyperband, as you may imagine, because the last bracket is already a random search, hyperband is a log factor slower than the random search to identify the best configuration. And while you may think, well, log factor, is it really so much? Well, the effect can be quite large because hyperparameter optimization methods already are quite expensive. Uh, so if you have to do this multiple times, you can imagine uh, that this grows quite fast. Now, because random search eventually converges to a solution, so if we give an infinite number of compute time to random search, then we know that with probability one, we're going to find the optimal solution given that the optimal solution is contained within the ranges that we selected for random search. Now, because hyperband uses random search, it enjoys the same uh, theoretical guarantees, but again, this does not have real practical importance because we do not have an infinite amount of compute time in practice. Now, uh, with hyperband, we, as you have seen, we explore different values of n for a fixed budget, which kind of resolves the b over n trade-off in successive halving. But of course, at the cost of spending additional compute time. 